Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. It's the Friday edition, October 2nd. We had a mixed day in the grains again. Corn was fractionally higher with a half a cent change, while beans and wheat closed to the downside on a three cent and five cent loss. Let's take a look at some of the news that was going on today. We started the day with uh, the U.S. Department of Labor announcing weaker jobs performance than expected. That took a hit on the stock market. Stocks were trading higher in the overnight session on the futures market, but ended the day negative. Uh, crude oil also doing a bout face on this uh, new data that suggests the economy is slower than expected. Fortunately, that didn't play much of a role in the grains today. Uh, some of the news coming out in the grain market was Stats Canada came out with their latest forecast for Canadian wheat, and those numbers came in on the high side. Analysts had looked for about a 25 million metric ton crop. Stats Canada said the number was actually 26, still uh, lower than the high end at expectation of 26.3. So nothing again to get, sort of give that wheat market a lift because the supply numbers continue to be burdensome. Uh, the only sort of good news on wheat that we ended the day on was after the close, we did get announcement from Egypt that they are tendering for wheat uh, from the usual suspects, the U.S., Russia, Ukraine. We will see early next week what the results of those tenders are. But when we look at the daily wheat chart, we've come up here from the lows set about two months ago, but we are up against the 100-day moving average around 522. It's going to be interesting to see where we end up next week, if we can break through that resistance or if we're going to tread lower. You know, we've had a nice uptrend here. The news supporting it has been the dry weather in the Ukraine and Russia and Australia. But the underlying uh, cap on this market continues to be global supply issues that we just have burdensome supplies in the wheat market. So it'll be interesting to see if technically we can close above that 522, which we didn't do today, even after testing it. Uh, on the cash market, let's take a look at that. We're right in the thick of harvest uh, with about 20% of the crop cut as of last Monday. We'll see on the coming Monday where we end up. But the reports we're getting from the field, especially in the case of soybeans, are that the crop is turning out much better than expected. Merchandisers uh, continue to say that their farmers are seeing five to 10 bushel an acre better than expected better than last year. Uh, farmers are actually starting to sell more in the cash market because of the better than expected crop. So we are seeing a little bit of weakness in soybeans, uh, even though overall it was unchanged. We're certainly seeing a downgrade at processor end user plants where we saw about a four cent drop this week. In corn, a somewhat slightly different animal, we've been low on basis for quite some time because we've had significant old crop carry out uh, you know, this year our crop's going to be about on par with what we uh, thought it's going to be. There's no big surprises there coming out of the field. And, and, you know, we're seeing a little bit of strength here in the corn market this week, just a fraction of, fractional higher move. The big strength really has been along the river terminals where we saw a big jump in gulf basis this week that helped, uh, you know, filter up the river system and give basis levels a boost there. On the ethanol side, you know, we're not seeing any big moves really on ethanol plants. My guess is that as we get past harvest, that we're going to see more of an increase in corn basis here just because we have uh, a slightly better balance sheet than we do in soybeans. And so that's where I would look for more basis improvement out of harvest. Uh, still, with 80% of the crop left to go, I think there's still some more downside risk here on the basis market. So keep that in your marketing plans as you're, as you're cutting grain and, and delivering it to the uh, elevators. The other thing I'd mention is, you know, at Grain Hedge, our costs are exceptionally low for clearing your trades. If you're doing grain contracts with uh, your, your local merchandiser, some of those guys are charging three to five cents a bushel on uh, futures contracts or options related contracts. You know, our commissions are substantially less than that if you want to take that on your own and, and reduce your costs. At, you know, $8 corn, or I'm sorry, $8 beans and $3 corn, you know, I think farmers should really think about how they can better, uh, better save those pennies every time, and Grain Hedge offers that opportunity for you. So that's all we got this week. Take a look at uh, grainhedge.com if you're interested in a trading platform. Next week on the tap, we've got uh, the results of the Egypt tender. Uh, we've got export inspections on Monday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.